And welcome to Off the Press, the newspaper review program, where we we'll take a look at our national dailies and try to make sense of it, dissect it as much as time would allow us. And with me to do so is, again, our in-house analyst, Annie uh, Ayeni. Good to have you again. Thank Still you. have you. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> All right. Um, a lot is happening in our world, happening yeah. also in our country. So let's see what the newspapers are saying. We will begin this morning with the Punch newspaper. I believe it will be displayed. And then the nation. Thank you very very much. And the punch says the federal government, the big story there is the federal government plans isolation centers at borders and 4,000 tests daily. That story is on pages two and six of the punch newspaper. And at the top, I'll go back to the top, IMF predicts worst depression, uh, Nigeria's economy contracting by 3.4%. That story is on page 24. And then amid coronavirus pandemic, Lassa fever kills 188 Nigerians. That story is on page 29 of the Punch newspaper. 80,000 apply for CBN 50... Uh, 50 billion naira COVID-19 inter intervention fund on page fund rather on page 24. And National Assembly leaders meet Buhari and seek uh, SIP reforms. That's on page 11 of the Punch newspaper. And then we have the figures as usual, the COVID-19 updates. Uh, again, we will uh, take a look at recoveries. Uh, discharged, 99 persons have been discharged. We are grateful. And we have uh, 373 confirmed cases and unfortunately uh, 10 deaths. To the right, uh, you'll find the global figures there for yourself. Our government traces 9,029 contacts, conducts 7,000 coronavirus tests. And Lagos uncovers 119 with symptoms in two day uh, two day day house to house uh, search and then uh, Lagos state government again records 25 as cases jump to 373 and are to test 2000 there's a picture story there also of medical supplies from the United Nations uh, to Nigeria we had that earlier in the news and Oshun uh, Facebook user remanded for alleged falsehood that's on page four of the, nation, the Punch newspaper, rather. Commission probes uh, failed cosmetic surgeries on page 24 also of the Punch newspaper. Uh, suspected headsmen kidnap Oyo Monarch's wife and daughter on page 30. Again, the level of insecurity there. We're going to suspend lockdown uh, three days on Friday. Uh, that's one is on page 18. And suspected killer of woman evangelists and others uh, paraded. Abductors of ex-Western state director's daughters also nabbed on pages 4 and 5 of the Punch newspaper. And lastly, airlines bidding for evacuation of Nigerians in U.S. and China on page 9. Annie, let's begin. Which of, there seem to be a lot happening in, you know, uh, in our world, as we said, and of course in Nigeria. So which one do you want? Well, we're looking at the recession. IMF is asking that they're saying that there will be a recession. I think this is, Three yes, they have said it. They've looked at the analysis. Experts will have all that information to give. But to me, this kind of speaks to the government. This mm -hmm. kind of speaks to Nigeria and the lawmakers and policymakers. The reason why our economy is the way it is is because of the type of policies that we have that are governing businesses. And it's, it's, it's a struggle for midterm businesses. It's a struggle for big businesses to exist in Nigeria. It's time the government look away from the big money crunching uh, from the big money makers mm -hmm. and look at small businesses and encourage them. The entertainment industry, they do a lot to support themselves. What, how about the education industry, the healthcare industries? Yes, we look at education as people going to school and coming out, but this is a, also a very viable place for employment. It's also a, a very viable place for learning and different types of learning. We can, there are jobs that can be created around education, which have not even been looked at in this country. We have jobs that can be created around healthcare, which have not received enough support because of government um, policies that, uh, that are governing these systems. When we have policies in government that can govern small businesses to thrive, then you can have other increased source of income. I mean, look at, for example, you go, to, you go out into the markets. You will see Nigeria made this, Nigeria mm -hmm. made that. Gary, um, Elubo, different sorts and herbs. So many of them, they, are pet, they, are, they have patent, they have NAFDAG, they have all sorts of, um, they have all sorts of approval. 
to sell what they are selling. What support do these people get to increase their business? Mm -hmm. What form of support? It's always crowdfunding. It's always supporting you and I support myself. So it's time government takes a look into all this and let the big wigs in economics and everything make policies that support small businesses so that we are not caught up in this type of thing, a second time. But does it look like, does it seem rather like the government is uh, overwhelmed? You know, in the face of uh, COVID-19, this is unprecedented. Uh, is, it, is it a case of being overwhelmed? Or again, it's a case of maybe, yes, in the face of the crisis, to be, uh, become more creative, as you're saying. Is, in your opinion, what do you say? The government is overwhelmed because of the system of governance that we have. Mm. The government is heavy, is top heavy on authority. The, the governance, go, governance system that we have is top heavy on authority. We don't have authority going down the, the lines and, and decisions being able to be made spot on. You, if we have that, that, that system, for example, if you want to register a company, mm -hmm. how long will it take you to register a company? You'll have to go to CSE, you'll have to get this, you'll have to get that. In the UK, within my room, on my laptop, I can register a company in one day. In one week, I can have my business flyers and everything running. outside already running. This is how long, when it takes this long to start a business, who is encouraged? Mm. And, the, and, the, and the fees that you pay to also start the business, if you meet a good person, they might ask you 150,000, depends on the type of business Businesses. you want to go into. Somebody has 20,000 to start a business. You have 100,000 to start a business. A friend says, don't worry, I'll give you 50. You want to use the whole of that 150 just for registration. And then what happens after that? Mm. If you can streamline, if you can make this within the reach of everyone, we all have mobile phones. Right now, we can transfer money That's on right. our mobile phones. If we can trust to transfer one million on our mobile phones, why can we not trust to start a business online? Hmm. and then take it outside and do the legwork after that. Interesting analogy there. If they bring that system in, it encourages more people to do their business. It saves people more money to be able to do more with your business. You can employ one person, two people, and pay them little and gradually increase it because you have money to start with. Mm -hmm. All right, let's move away from uh, IMF and predictions, and let's talk about this uh, day to... Uh, um, house to house um, inspection, uh, tracing rather. When I read that, uh, I'm not so sure. Um, do you think this is going to be an effective way of identifying those with symptoms or those with su or suspected cases? Because if you come to my house, for instance, and I say, well, there's nobody, how would you know? Is it an effective strategy? It must be uh, an effective strategy to a level for them to have been able to get 119 people. That's, mm -hmm. that's a high number. That is a high number for them to get. So it's an effective strategy because I'm like, remembering that some people will not go to the hospital. That's right. Some people will refuse to go because they, they have faith. It's not just because they have it, but because they don't feel, because they have herb, herbs that they can take. Now, if they're able to get on to get all these people with this, if, uh, with this way of going from door to door, mm -hmm. it highlights more towards the, it's, it limits the dangers that we know that communities will get into because these people are taken out of the community. So I think it's an effective way and whatever they have done to get 119, kudos to them. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on you know, federal government planning isolation centers at borders to be able to test 4,000 4, daily? That, 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 in my opinion, is a brilliant idea. That it happens, it's a very good thing. I actually saw a caption on uh, one of these um, in one, in an Asian country. You know, normally now when we are going into an hotel, if you are going into anywhere, you go through security. Mm -hmm. But actually, before you walk in, you actually get um, you actually get washed with um, with a disinfectant or something like that to kind of kill the virus before you go in. Four thousand to be able to test four thousand people daily mm -hmm. is positive. However, let us see the containment that follows after that. Mm -hmm. When you get, when we, we follow, when we have 4,000 that are tested daily, and now how are they going to be taken care of? That is another level of administration entirely. Mm -hmm. So as far as this 4,000 is good, 
kudos to them. Let us also have the follow-up of this 4,000, that we know that once they are detected, they are being treated before they come out into the society. But the danger of having, uh, you know, increasing the capacity for testing is the fact that, I don't know what I should say is danger or the reality, the outcome, let's say the outcome, is the fact that when you have more testing centers, I mean, we had a doctor who came on the show and explained that, when you have more testing centers, it means that you're going to have more, more people. Patients. Now, if we have more patients, do we have the capacity, even in Lagos State, for instance, to be able to handle that? Because much as we're talking of community transmission, having to go this further, I'm not saying we shouldn't, it reveals, it's going to reveal, you know, the fact that we have a lot of work to do in the government has to do more in terms of capacity. Do we have that capacity? Do you think we have the capacity? Unfortunately, unfortunately, I, we really cannot say, I cannot say, for example, you cannot say, for example, that exactly we have that capacity. We are being told what government has we are being told what the isolation centers have I right now we know that there are more places that are being used as isolation centers mm -hmm. there are more individuals and companies coming up building hospitals build them giving beds and there's more support coming in for government with the 50 million billion that has been given to the federal government euros mm -hmm. to take care of COVID-19 with all the, with the, that will allow them to increase capacity of the what is needed to take care of people mm -hmm. now my to government is they now need to step up on actually getting people involved the nma is overwhelmed with uh, doctors getting upset mm -hmm. nurses are not enough and all that it's time for uh, for them to also step up and put in their own quota and i think at this time it's time to actually have support auxiliary nurses hmm. where in, in in care in the care industry for example in nursing you have the care support the care support system the peop are people who have the knowledge they, are, they, are, they have an understanding anyone from the age of 20 and above can go into this with the with the program the empower program that mm -hmm. the government did there were some of these children that were taught in the area of medical yeah. this is the time to call them up it's and say millions. okay yes this is the time for you to come out and then give them a training of a two days of a three days and then they can go out in the field and start to work because there is work to be done mm. i see government using this as an advantage for them to engage the young people mm. who are who are getting restless mm. come this is work to be done and this is the ppe program personal protect um, protective um, equipment Different. that you are going to use and then they can get their hands on and support this system so that we can have um, a rounded more support towards this let's talk about lassa fever i okay. mean it's shocking to see that um 188 Nigerians, you know, uh, die of Lassa fever. It almost looked like with coronavirus, we forgot that we're dealing with uh, Lassa fever. I mean, uh, how do we how do we handle all of these? You know, what personal um, responsibility should individuals or even collectively assume during this time to be sure that you know it looks like we have a whole problem with hygiene and, and health issues all around us. Um, yes, right now the, the need for good hygiene is the, is the biggest highlight, is the biggest highlight. And I understand Kogi State mm -hmm. seems to have more cases of the Lassa fever issue yeah. than any, anyone else. In, I, I will, what, what I will say in my own opinion, yes, we have a very fragile state. Nigeria is a very fragile state. Our medical system is very fragile. And someone said, is this the straw that breaks the camel's back? The mm. camel's back is already broken. It is now it? needs to be repaired. <laughs> yes, it, is it, yes it, it is already so. broken. It now needs to be repaired. Mm. Because when we have things at this level, we are talking about Lassa fever and also talking about COVID-19. COVID-19 is affecting everyone all around the world. It is also affecting people in Nigeria. We still have few numbers of COVID-19 um, people affected now. Mm. Let us also put some resources towards the Lassa fever issue. There are experts in this field who know what to do. There are experts in this field who know what to do. Engage those experts and empower them with what they need. Mm. Now, right now, the nation has been given money for COVID-19. They have been given, the, the federal government has signed off different monies for COVID-19. Let right. us see them also sign off financial support oh, for a right. set of people to deal with Lassa fever. We have the people, mm -hmm. we have the manpower, we have the people interested in offering this support and system in this country. Remove 
remove politics, remove barriers, mm. allow people to come out with confidence and use the, their expertise to support what is on ground because the, the result at the end of the day is all to our benefit. Mm -hmm. If any one person dies in Nigeria, somehow, if you look at the history of that person, they will be traced to somebody that is somebody that you know mm -hmm. and that I know. Thank you. Strangely enough, we have Lassa fever killing more people than COVID-19. COVID Let's move on to the nation newspaper in the interest of time. And um, it will be displayed. Uh, customs yet to hand over 110 trucks of rice. That's a, a minister's minister, only 40 released. That's according to the minister there, saying that only 40 has been released. Uh, Lawan and Gajabia Amelia to Buhari review USIP. I think that's the social um, social investment program. And then COVID-19, EU gives federal government 50 million euros. Team visits Buhari. That's on page eight, page five, I beg your pardon. And the big story, presidency cautions PDP on court freeze uh, Caverton pilots, others in rivers. That's on page 29. And then we have military deployed in battle against Lagos and Ogun gangs. And then government moves uh, to stop robberies. Bakoba and others seek nationwide lockdown. NCDC to raise uh, testing capacity to 4,000 daily. All of those is you find on front page and continued on page 8 of the nation newspaper. And CBN develops 3.5 trillion uh, Naira three-year recovery plan. That story is also on, on the front page, but this continues on page 9, uh, page 29 rather. We have a picture story there. Um, Turkish woman, uh, 107, being uh, wheeled out of hospital by a grandson after recovering from coronavirus. That's interesting. She's 107 <laughs> and she wow. recovered. A piece of good news there. And of course, we have the, the figures which we'll, uh, we'll say take a look at uh, to your own time, the figures of um, COVID-19, both nationally and globally. We'll just take um, a story from here and then move on in the interest of time. The robberies and insecurity, it's frightening already. And um, we can't be dealing with COVID-19 and dealing with insecurity. What do we do? These are problems that have been there before. They didn't start today. They, did, they, they, were, they, have, they are not things that have just started. There is a, in, there is a system that was put in place to combat against these um, robberies. Because I guess somebody said that when the armed robbers saw that uh, robbery, uh, kidnapping was, was, more, was more fruitful, they decided to go into kidnapping. Mm -hmm. Right now, people are locked down and there's the COVID-19 issue. Uh, it, it, it's, it can be overwhelming. Mm -hmm. It does get overwhelming. But overwhelming is not a word that you use for governance administration. Mm. It's something that needs to be done. It's something that needs to be Is dealt it because with. Because they can't, the government can be, administration can be overwhelmed or those in leadership can't be overwhelmed. The I'm trying to understand the rationale. The, the truth about this is anything that has to do with human administration gets overwhelming. Mm -hmm. Out of 10 people that you may need to govern, you will have 10 different ideas, not just 10. You might have a hundred different things that you need to deal with, with just 10 people. And you need to make a decision that cuts across everybody. Mm -hmm. And we are now talking about administration of over 200 million people. Yes, there are pockets of all these things that are happening. And it's time that we see action from the state governors on how they are managing their situations. How are the, the chiefs, the ballers, the obas? We have so many of them in different um, localities. What are they doing? Because for every, for every area in Lagos State, you have the Omonile in mm -hmm. Yoruba. They say the people who own the mm -hmm. environment. Mm -hmm. And I can bet you, Amaka, the chief of that place gets his tax from every single home on that street that same chief can use those same boys that he's using to get all those to call his people to order hmm. and say, uh -uh, no, this is not happening. Why is there robbery? It's time everybody steps out to the plate and come out with their own responsible way of handling the matter. Mm. Government cannot think of everything. Local government chairmen can do their own. Also the chiefs, the ballers of all these local governments. These people, these people have ballers. If they know that they, can, they cannot get away with it because a ballet there is going to be watching over them, we will not have some of these cases. And I think if we go into the local of what the ballers can do, it can 
can go a long way to help what to help support what the government is already handling at a large in a large scale. It was a few days ago, I believe, that we had an Oba on the show, and exactly what you're saying is what he alluded to, you know, in terms of saying use the local leaders more. Yes. They know their people. Yes. They, you know, they know how to do it. Not that the government is not doing enough, but the government is somewhere at the top. But you need to engage those in the grassroots. Yes. Just maybe we'll be able to find uh, more results. And I want to say thank you very much, Annie. Uh, this you. is where we are going to call it a wrap for of the press this morning because we'll continue with the news. And we do this every day. I mean, Monday to Friday here on Plus TV Africa 8.30 where we take a look at the newspapers and to make sense of it. I am Amaka Okwe. Please do stay safe.